Hey, welcome back everyone. In previous video, I explained to you how to customize the forms. Next step, how to make the forms even more intuitive with Axure is to add the validation. And it's really important, especially if you want to, let's say, user test the flows, you know, inside out, because you might want to check the copy of the forms and error states. You want to check all the edge cases of what sort of information users would be inputting to know exactly that it's valid. So form validation is essential for any prototype. And that's actually a reason why you would use, you know, a muscle tool like Axure to begin with. In this case, you can make it as smart as you want it to be and almost as real as coded version. So let's jump right into it. Um, as you can see, I have a prototype from a previous video where we set different custom fields. And what we really want to do next is allow users to, let's say, enter emails, enter passwords, which are the same, and then click next and go to the next step. Now, there are a couple of things to consider here. First and foremost, we need to validate that the email field is an actual email. Next, we need to make these hidden and password like and that they're actually the same. And once the user clicks next, if you know, those fields are not correct, we give an error message. And if it's success, just open the next page. So simple as that. And let's crack on to begin with, it's really good practice to name your input fields. As you can see, I have this input field, I'm gonna give it uh, a name like email input. I also like to add uh, identifier beforehand so that they know that it has to have some sort of extra condition done to it. Uh, a plus sign is quiet. So let's say it's quite neutral password one. And the last one, let's call it password two. And what we can do in Axure, we can either do the manual validation or on automated. I'm going to show you how to do manual because that's a good start to kind of think how to use the tool to its extent. What you have to do is set the different fields to um, what sort of type they are. So let's say if I want to make these fields um, to look like their password when the user is typing instead of just plain text, I would select both fields or one by one and have this settings icon next to password one, I would select what sort of type it is. So as you can see, we have a password field and let's do that for a second one as well, password, and that would mask it automatically if I start typing, which is great. It's really a quick way to do so. Now for emails, we also can select it into the email type and we also can assign the submit button, which is the next. Let me just quickly name it. And let's preview it. Let's see what happens. As you can see, I have an email address. Let's say random incorrect email address, some sort of password, and I can click next. Now, why it happens is because we haven't done any logic to validate it. You know, it, it's like a user could enter anything and we couldn't capture it. So what I want to do next is add some manual logic, conditional statements to check if the fields are correct. I usually start by designing an error state or like an error panel of how it could look like. It could be just text. It could be like a toast type of thing. So as you can see, I made just a generic uh, type of note for the users. Might make it in red just so it's much more clear. But depending on time, you would want to probably make it a bit more visually appealing. I'm gonna use noun project really quick to find an icon. Um, let's say error. And I'm gonna select the same exact shade from that and use, let's see that icon. Looks pretty good as long as it does the trick, kind of tells the users of what's going on and what we have to do next. So boom, I have this panel. I'm gonna create it into dynamic panel and say state one, let's call it generic error. Now, if I would have more specific errors, I would create different states and then I can just flip it and show it. So I could have a, an error for passwords, specifically an error for emails and stuff like that. So now I have three states of this dynamic panel. I'm gonna give it the name for a good standard error panel, let's say. And I'm gonna set it to hidden. So meaning when the prototype is loaded, let me just show you, it's not shown. When we hit that next, and let's say on click, something happens, uh, set panel state, error panel, 
and we can also show it if it's hidden, which is important to show it because it's hidden by default. And let's say, let's animate it. So slide down and let's say two milli 200 milliseconds. And now if we preview it and click next, boom, our toast is there. We also can add another thing. So we can, let's say, say add another interaction saying, um, wait for, I don't know, three seconds and then fade out. So let's say we can say show height, error panel, height, and animate out. So slide, slide up, let's say, in, let's say 300. Let's test it out. Boom, so it works. Um, it's quite basic, but it works. Now what we need to do is assign some sort of condition to it. Um, we need to check that once we click the button, that one of these fields, let's say correct or incorrect. Uh, by default, what I would check as a condition is that there, there is something in the fields or if there is none. That's a basic condition you need to do, let's say when user testing your prototypes, if a user doesn't input anything, you need to show them something and say, hey, you forgot to do this. So I would go one by one and check in the conditions if this is correct. There is this if uh, icon in the top right corner. If I could click on it, I would could create a condition and let's name this condition empty fields. So that if the fields are empty, we fire up an error. There is an explanation of how to do this, but let me really quickly show you what you can do. You can just add logic. You can see text on widget. By default, it always prefills this. Um, let's say email input if is not numeric or alphanumeric, or let's say one off where you could just select different options. So let's say email at email.com. If it's not that, then it's going to fire up the error, everything what's underneath. So let's test it out. If our email address is email at email2.com instead of email.com and next, you see it's incorrect. But now if I set it to email at email.com and click next, oh, that I caught myself. Um, what I forgot to do is set another case. As you can see, I have an if for this, everything what's underneath, but I don't have a separate case for uh, what happens if it's a success. So I would just copy it in and say else, and I could just I would delete all those bits. I could edit that case right away. And let's say is one off email at email.com. And I could just also enter email at email.com just in case users type with a capital I'll click OK and I would want to add interaction to take us to the next step. So the basic profile as you can see I'm saying if this thing is not email at email.com show me an error and if empty fields um, condition fires in and I say that it is then taking me to a next step. Now with else, um, since both conditions at the moment are correct, I would want to make a toggle because it's two different branches at the moment. If I would define the same as there is, it would be just one branch. If I test it out and let's say I have it empty, it's an error. If I have something, 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 it's an error. But now if, as a user, if I have, let's say test email at email.com, it opens it up. To make it specific, you can add more conditions. You can add more conditional statements, uh, more logic to it. And you know, you can add as many as, or let's say what happens if you click that, you could already check if a password is correct or not. You know, you can do a lot of things here. But the last thing that I wanted to do before you just go and explore on your own is to show that how to set the email to specific case. 
And since we have empty fields, let's name this case empty email field because it's specific. And I'm gonna name that case to empty email field. So now all, all I need to do to make it specific, I would edit this set panel state uh, ticket and I would just say email error. And it would automatically open the email error instead of a generic. So let's test it out. If there is nothing, email information is dead, yada, yada, yada. Email information is incorrect. Please check the field and submit again. And as you can see, it made it a specific error. You could also add some specificity. So let's say once that email, once that error is fired off, you could focus on the specific field or let's say even show another dynamic panel which has an outline to the field. An example of that could be that we just add an interaction saying that focus on email input and just maybe drag it above that set panel state so that the error appears at the same time as the email, email input. And let's test it out. So let's say if we have some sort of bogus email and we put it, boom, it selected it. Now if we, let's say it's all out of focus and we select, boom, it selects the field right away. So it's simple as that. I think it's quite interesting of how to actually make these things happen. Um, I would recommend to experiment as much as you can because there is so much and so many ways to do so. If you have a specific question, please leave it down below. I might make a video addressing it or showing it how I would do it because there is no one way to do this. So, you know, we might learn from each other. As always, thanks for watching this. I hope this is helpful. If so, give a like, uh, subscribe to this channel if you're new to this and stay tuned for next material in Axure Noob to Buster series.